Welcome to FTF HQ. Today we're gonna to be doing an office tour slash what's in my bag and walking you through every piece of gear I own and why I'd recommend buying it. Now, before we get started, I always wanna say, I started out eight years ago accumulating gear, started with a Canon T2i and a PVC pipe DIY slider. So I don't wanna hear that I inherited this from my dad. I worked for this and now we're gonna walk through and show you what we've accumulated and what we have here in the office slash studio. Now, first of all, I just wanna tell you guys, we started building this about a year and a half ago and it just wrapped up getting finished about five months ago. So we just got moved in a few months ago and I've spent the last few months filling it out, buying stuff to get it furnished and all that. So it's been a long work in progress and we're finally to a point where I feel like we can function out of this place. So excited to be in here, have a lot more space. I used to be in my basement before this. And before that I was in a smaller office space and before that in my bedroom. So again, a lot of progression has happened over the years to lead up to getting my own office space. So now, first of all, this is a big Ikea armoire that we got for probably a thousand bucks to store a bunch of our knickknacks and gear and whatnot. So let's talk first about lenses over here. One of the zoom lenses you're seeing right now is a 16 to 35 Canon that is on this camera. And one of them's in the shop actually, 24 to 70, because I dropped it and broke it. And then one of them is over there, we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, for the most part here, we have our prime lenses. So you have our Sigma 85, Sigma 35. These are both 35s, one's Landon's. A Sigma 20, a Sigma 18 to 35, that's a zoom lens. And then the macro 100. Canon lens and then right here we have a Liowa 12 millimeter that we use for super wide stuff like real estate on our crop sensor 1.35 1DX. Oh, do not forget about this guy. This is the Liowa 24 millimeter probe lens. This thing is insane, the types of shots you can get, but we'll show you some of the shots that you can get with this guy. Just got him playing around with it. Uh, pretty cool lens for specialty shots. As far as the times I use these lenses, the 85, I'm using that for like tight detail shots. 35 is awesome because you can get pretty wide while still being, you know, flattering enough for people's faces and whatnot. 20 millimeter I actually use most for my tutorials and stuff because it's super wide so you can get multiple people in the shot. You can see your gear on a desk. And I've used this with the Canon 1DX Mark II. So with the crop factor, it comes out to more like a 28 millimeter. The macro, obviously used for super tight stuff. So yeah, that's kind of the main lens lineup we got there. More and more I'm going towards using prime lenses versus zoom lenses but definitely zoom lenses are gonna be more versatile so when I'm like shooting a live wedding or something. Uh, down here we got our phone stabilizers. This is the top phone stabilizer I recommend. This is the Movi stabilizer and you see we have some counterweights on this one. That's for when I'm using um, external lenses, which we'll show you in a second, but definitely that is my favorite phone stabilizer. Now, second place I would give to the DJI Osmo Mobile. I believe this is version three. By the way, I'm gonna be linking to all these in the description so you can see where to buy any of these. This one's also good. It's gonna be two to three times cheaper than your Movi, but personally, I just think Movi's gimbals are better. And this is even cheaper, like under hundred bucks is gonna be a smooth Q, smooth three. These ones aren't bad, but definitely the stability of those stabilizers get worse and worse the less you spend. You get what you pay for. Here we have all of our filters. I'm a big polarizer guy. I like polarizers. I also recently picked up the Peter McKinnon variable ND filter, which is awesome. I like it except for the fact that it has a little bit of a green tint on there, but other than that, it's super versatile, super awesome filter. These are all by Polar Pro, by the way. Polar Pro is the company I love and use for all my filters. But yeah, for most of what I'm doing when I'm outdoors is I like using uh, um, polarizers so that's what most of these are different sizes and densities of polarizers gorilla tripod I actually don't use that much but I use the head for overhead setups here we have a bunch of knickknacks here's my moment lenses love my moment lenses here we got ND filters for drones again this is from polar pro ND filters for your phone actually haven't used those a ton a toothbrush for brushing your teeth a bunch of batteries uh, tools, just little knickknacks. You find out when you do filmmaking, there's lots of little gadgets and connectors and adapters you need for filmmaking. Again, more knickknacks, trinkets, cables, and then we get less and less organized as we come down here. That's it for this side. Coming over here, just kind of a lot of boxes up in here. This is kind of my audio portion right here. We got uh, four different cases of 
uh, lavalier mics. This is the one I love and use the most. It's the Sennheiser G4. It's what you're listening to right now. And uh, we have one of those. Then we have some G3, some of the older versions. Right here is my Rode NT1, um, a great podcasting microphone. It used to be my main microphone, but now I've moved on to SM7Bs, which we'll talk about in a second. Here are all of my monitors. You guys saw that I did recently a monitor review on Desviews, Andy Cine's, Small HDs, Automos. These are all the different monitors we own. And the main ones we use are Small HD, which we'll show you in a minute. So a lot of these aren't in use currently, but uh, the Small HDs we do use. Coming down here, we got more audio gear. These are just audio boxes um, that we have, that we've bought in the past. We bought better, nicer ones now. So we have a bunch of extra old stuff. This is all the on-camera road mics you see here. Got like four or five of those. Again, as they come out with new ones, which we'll talk about some new ones over here in a minute. Um, but these are kind of the older mics. This is an NTG4, I believe. These are the Zoom H6s for recording audio too. So all the audio gear sits here. Uh, coming down here, more tools. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Kind of just random, you know, diffusers cases, bags, whatnot. Up here you guys see we have um, stabilizers. That's the Movi M5, that's the Crane 3, and what's being filmed on right here is the Ronin S. Ronin S being our most used of the three. Ronin S is, in my opinion, better than the Crane 3 in most ways. I did a re review on that, you can see the comparison. But I actually like the Movi M5 better than the Ronin S as far as uh, stabilization. Again, I think FreeFly just has better gimbals overall than any other company, but that thing's a lot bigger and clunkier to carry around and doesn't have a stand to sit it on, so we just end up not using it as much because this is easier to use. And that's something to keep in mind, guys, that when you're buying gear, don't just consider what's best, consider what would I actually use and it's most practical and easiest to use on the go because if you don't end up using it, doesn't matter how nice it is, you're not going to ever use it. So factor that in as well the glide cams. This is kind of a progression of glide cams. You have the Devon Graham series with the Devon Graham head over here on the HD 4000 body with the HD 4000 head over here because I like the Devon Graham head better, but I like the gimbal better on the 4000 series. And then they made this guy, which is the HD Pro, which is a good combination of both. So if you guys are gonna get a glide cam, this is what I recommend, the glide cam HD Pro, the perfect hybrid of both. And here are some older glide cam HD 2000s down the line there. And over here we have our equipment board, peg board, whatever you wanna call it. You can just throw in these little things into here, little hooks and then put stuff on top. We just have so much tripods and monopods and sliders and stuff, flag. So it's nice just to be able to hang it all in one spot instead of cluttering it up everywhere. Here we have monopods. I got uh, a couple here. First one I ever got was a Manfrotto. I've talked about this before, but didn't love it. And then I picked up a Siru later on, a little more expensive, but it's a lot better in my opinion. So if you're gonna get a monopod, that's the one I'd get. As far as sliders go, uh, you guys know I use Rhino sliders. We usually use the carbon fiber one more just because it's lighter and easier to haul around. Um, and the main times we use a slider is for product shoots. We'll cut to some B-roll of times we use that. So we bust that out quite a bit here in the office, not so much out in the field because it's just harder to take around on the go. Right here we have a eight by eight scrim gym with a huge diffuser here. I haven't actually used this, I thought I would. I've tried using it a few times, but it's so big that it's really hard to use. So again, don't just think about what would I love to use, think about what would I practically use. That was like a seven, eight hundred dollar purchase that I just really haven't used much, even though when the time comes that I may need a huge diffuse light, that would be really nice to have. But yeah, we don't currently use it much. These guys are tube lights. I actually do use these a lot. Love these bolts and lights. We'll link to those in the description as well. So yeah, those are really nice. We'll show you times that we've used those in the past. Here we got our five in one reflector. Oh. Love these guys. Lots of uses for blocking light or diffusing light or whatever. Okay, let's move on to, uh, let me show you this guy. This is a barn door, sliding barn door. This was custom made out of wood. This whole thing here was about three grand. But yeah, definitely costly. This is a plant from Home Goods, And this is a Carter. So Carter is, um, hey he's actually one of my oldest buddies. We uh, went on a mission together. Not and the oldest and, only. and the only friend I have. We were mission buddies back in Uruguay about 10 years ago. We came back and we worked together at Devon Supertramp and he is now, as of a few months ago, working for us. So it's- Assistant two. Assistant two. 
the manager. So that's Carter. Here's his setup. We got uh, his AirPods. Yep. It's good. That's that's cluttered. That's really not looking good. Okay. Yeah, we got here the newest 16-inch MacBook Pro. How have you liked it? New escape button. <laughs> New escape button. <laughs> um, and this is the LG 38 inch wide curved monitor. I love this thing, it's super awesome. How have you liked it? Uh, it's a little big. But? But I like it. <laughs> but he likes it. He doesn't have to like it, but I like it. Um, yeah, it is big, but that's nice. I like big. Well, what the problem is, the monitor's great. The desk is small. That's the problem. The what kind of desk we got here? This is an Artifox desk. Super good looking. Be aware, it is a little bit small. We didn't know the exact dimensions. We probably should have researched that, but it is probably our best looking desk for sure. Um, this guy, I can't remember, we'll link to it, but this is a nice little laptop stand. Grove made. Pretty expensive, but it is a beautiful piece of wood. Very functional, but on a small desk, it is kind of cramped over there. So just be aware of that. Yeah, that's pretty much it for Carter's setup there. He's got, we bought a bunch of these chairs. These are like $200, <laughs> that is a beautiful model. Great lumbar support. These are actually chiropractor recommended. I have a chiropractor. We'll show you some clips of me getting adjusted. Those are satisfying sounds right there. So yeah, this chair is recommended by my chiropractor and it helps that lumbar support. And uh, right here we got a new light I just picked up. Let's turn that puppy on. Oh yeah, look at that. This is a 28 inch Falcon Eyes light. This is basically a big diffused light that uh, has a really slim profile if you're short on space, like situations like this where you're up against a wall and you don't have a ton of depth to put a big dome on there. It's not quite as big as what you'll see in a minute, our aperture dome lights. So it's not gonna be as soft, but it's 28 inches, still pretty soft and it's gonna be a great look and it's gonna be more portable and all that. So a great addition to our family here. Here on the wall, you'll see more of these. These are acoustic panels by Geek Acoustic, I believe. Kind of expensive, but they're gonna be better than acoustic foam and they obviously they look a lot better. Um, we actually see them up here. Got some up here over on that wall as well. Those are just going to help the acoustics in the room. Acoustics in this room aren't perfect. So up here you have uh, acoustic panels hanging from the ceiling. That's probably five grand worth of panels hanging up there. That just helps the acoustics so we can have an open concept without it being too reverby in the room. So that's really important to helping the audio you're hearing right now sound decent. Let's come over here now to our gear shelf. This is the Tilta shoulder rig. Uh, I don't use it a ton. The times I have used it, I like it, but it was pretty expensive. Again, coming down to functionality, because it's so big and bulky and heavy, I might use one more if I had a simpler one, but this one has a ton of moving part, parts, super customizable, super heavy. Here we got our drones. The Phantom 4 Pro, my personal favorite drone. You have the Mavic 2 Pro, which a lot of people prefer over that, but I don't like it as much, but there are pros and cons to each. Did a full video on that. Over here we got the Red Dragon, our most expensive prop in the office. Never shot on it, but it looks really nice. I thought it'd be worth getting. Just kidding, we do use it, but not as much as our Canon cameras because it is a lot bigger, bulkier, heavier, worse battery life, no autofocus, things like that. For the kind of content we shoot, it's just not quite as um, useful for us, but um, for those who shoot a lot of um, you know, feature film, documentary, more narrative stories, that would be a better camera to get. On that is the Canon 70 to 200. Over here we got the Blackmagic 6K pocket camera. We honestly haven't used this since we did a review on it. Just not our cup of tea for the type of stuff we shoot. Great camera, but terrible battery life and other things that make it not super usable. This is the first camera that I ever owned. $200 Canon T3i used. 6D Mark II, haven't used that much since we got the EOS R. So if you're picking between those two, I'd get the EOS R. Has its limitations. As you know, we did a comparison of this against the 5D Mark IV, go check that out. But what I do love is this 28 to 70 beast of a lens, 2.8 aperture fixed on that. So. I mean, it is massive, as you can see there in comparison to that camera. The EOS R, personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, going from a 1DX Mark II, it's kind of a downgrade. There are perks, uh, like having the flip-out screen and a lot smaller, but I'm waiting on the R5. I think I'll use the R5 a lot more than I would the EOS R, and uh, then I'll be able to fully utilize that 28 to 70 millimeter lens. Here we got the 1DX Mark II. We got several of these. Um, 
Both of these camera angles are 1DX Mark IIs. And um, uh, here are the 20 millimeter lens. Again, a 20 millimeter is what I use most for a lot of my tutorial stuff. And we'll talk about it in a second, but we have a 1DX Mark III over in the next room. So down here, coming to our battery charging station. Tried to make this as clean as possible. Hard to keep it clean when you have to charge 20 things at a time. We have a drill battery. We have Canon batteries. We have our 1DX Mark II batteries. We have batteries, these Sony batteries for uh, external monitors and other things. We got some lights charging. We got our red batteries charging. We got our Rhino slider stuff charging. Right here you have a rotating black platform thing here. This we use for product shoots. We'll cut to some footage of times we've used that. And we also have a white one over here that we'll show you, but uh, those are super nice. And then here just Pelican cases and different cases to haul this gear off when needed. So yeah, that's kind of the, the gear rack there. All right, coming over here to this side of the A5. This is our product shooting area. See here, we got a Manfrotto tripod. We got another tube light here. We got a jib for doing some overhead stuff. These are uplift legs that allow you to adjust the height of the desk, the white spinning table. And then here we have a bunch of microphones. Dakota's doing a comparison of the cheapest microphones he could find. Don't get these snowballs, these suck. You wanna get on the cheap end are the Blue Yetis, love those, and then some other options here. This guy right here is the Rode NTG. We'll put it up on the screen. Anyway, this is one of the best mics for the price that I've seen, super versatile, allows you to use it as a, a shotgun mic, you can use it as a studio mic, you can use it as an on-camera mic. One of the best microphones I'd recommend getting for the price, super versatile, that guy. Here we got our, our lights, this is the Aperture 300D with the light dome. These are my favorite key lights for that nice soft look. And back here, another Aperture 300D with a Fresnel gadget on the front here with some barn doors that allows you to get a nice focused light. And then back here we got these acoustic panels, which what I do here is let's say I'm coming to film over here. Wherever I'm filming, I'll just grab a few of these, surround myself with them, and that just cuts down the amount of reverb. So when I come to sit down here, my audio is more contained and not reflecting off of walls. Here we have a nice little setup in this corner. The goal with building this office space was to have a bunch of different setups, places to film. Carter's desk is a place to film. We have this product corner to film. And then right here, I've done some Facebook Lives. So it's, it's just nice having different setups in different areas so that multiple people can be filming at a time in different areas and different looks, just kind of mixing it up so you don't get bored of the same look over and over. Here we just have a regular iMac. This is actually the first iMac that I got probably five years ago. Since then, we've upgraded to more more computers that we'll show you in a minute, but love IMAX. Here we got a small HD. This guy right here is actually the Mark II of the 300D. And if you're going to get the 300D, definitely get the Mark II because as Lannan's footage is gonna show, you got this all-in-one guy here instead of two separate boxes, and it's a lot less loud. You had huge noisy fans on the original one, so they've made the Mark IIs a lot better, so I highly recommend getting the 300D Mark IIs if you do look into those. Right here we got ourselves what is currently my go-to shotgun mic, the Rode NTG5. Love that guy. Um, here on a boom pole, on a C-stand, XLR cables. Highly recommend Mogami as a quality brand gonna last you a long time super high quality sound a little more expensive but worth it i think i always like to buy the most expensive not the most expensive but more expensive things than rather than going cheap now you might be saying but parker why do you just have a big blank wall right here it's just a white wall what's the purpose of that well i'm glad you asked get some uh, close-up tight cinematic stuff of me doing this <laughs> We're gonna start using this space to do live in-person trainings, invite 20 to 30 people here in our office at a time and train them in person. Let them use our equipment, hands-on, show them how to do it. And then obviously have presentations up here where we're teaching a large group of people. Now, the problem with putting a projector in this space is we have a huge open concept. And so in order to mount a projector, we'd have to extend it down like 10 feet. 
and then we'd have this dangling projector out in the middle of nowhere. And so it wasn't a very good option. We also thought about doing like nine TVs to have a big, huge image up here, but that gets super expensive, like 20, 30 grand to get a multi-TV setup like that. And then we came across something called the LG Cinebeam 4K laser projector. So the way a short throw projector works is it only has to be a few inches from the wall, seven inches exact to project a 120 inch image. We're actually going a little bit beyond that. Ours is about a foot from the wall, which gives us 150 inches, which is bigger than they recommend, but we're in a huge space where people are gonna be sitting really far back, so we wanted to make it a little bit bigger. But the point is, we can have this projecting, and I can walk in front of it without it ruining the projection. So this was the best solution for us for what we plan on using it for. Beyond doing the live in-person trainings, we also do team meetings regularly. So being able to meet here as a team and project everything up there is super awesome. And obviously just watching movies on this is a real treat. Now, some other reasons that we got this projector in particular is it's a 4K projector, and apparently it's the only 4K projector that can stream 4K Netflix content. This is also 2700 lumens, so it's gonna be plenty bright in a dark room, but it also has a two million to one contrast ratio, DCI-P3 97% color accuracy, and it supports HDR10, which means you'll see deeper blacks and more accurate and vibrant colors that your typical projector just can't produce. And on Honestly, this projector, as far as image quality and contrast and vibrant colors, rivals that of my LG TVs, which you guys know I love. And this is about as close as a projector comes to matching the image quality of an OLED TV. So I've been super impressed with this projector, highly recommend it. And in order to be able to darken the room like you just saw, we installed this awesome system here that allows me with these automatic shades that we installed to bring up all the lights in the house. Or if you don't want direct sunlight, let's say it's super sunny, we can only select diffusion and that brings down just white diffusers. So we still get light coming in, but it's a super soft diffused light. Like I said, being able to have a product shoot area where you can choose between having completely white diffused light or completely blacked out background over here just makes it nice to be able to control light. Anytime we're lighting a set, we'll completely black out the entire room so that we can just have the lights exactly where we want them. And that's something important to keep in mind if you're gonna be lighting sets is you do wanna have full control over the light. So that is studio one. Now, moving on to studio number two. Open the barn door. This is a smaller space. Um, I thought about walling this off to make another office space, but I decided to keep it open so we have room to kind of put gear in here. Oh, whoa, earthquake, earthquake, keep rolling. Where, where do we go? Should we get outside? Don't go outside. No, it's the best place. What? While it's shaking, because that's what's here. I'll show you. <laughs> this is why you don't go outside, because the, the stuff on your building is what's going to fall. Yeah, first. but if I go in the middle of the... While it's shaking, Parker. Plane. There's no... Okay, earthquake tip. We just had an earthquake while we were filming. You're supposed to go outside in the middle of a field. Carter doesn't know. He's assistant to the manager. All right, anyway, back to Studio 2. That was our second earthquake today, by the way. The world is ending. Coronavirus, earthquakes, ammonia leaks at Kennecott Copper Mine. Moroni's trumpet fell off. Visit Come Unto Christ to learn more about your salvation. So this is where we do, come over here. Again, wood wall. That was about $1,200 to have that custom made. I'll link to the guy who made it. Awesome work. He's local in Utah. So. You guys have seen a lot of tutorials done here. Um, we got two SM7B mics that, uh, these are my favorite mics. Super high quality sound, probably the most popular for podcasting out there. Have two of them. When we have two people, when we have three people, we just have a third mic out of camera like that. That is the Rode NTG3 what I used to use before the NTG5, both awesome. This one's a little more boomy. Then we have the Aperture 120D. This is one of my favorite lights as well. I actually like these better than the 300Ds because they're just less bulky. They're less powerful, but I don't need as much power for what I'm doing, so um, they work just great. Here we have another tube light. This just kind of gives me a little fill light up here, a little catch light in the eye, so I like having that on. In fact, let's turn all this on real quick. We'll turn on this light. Then we have some more tube lights back here that Lana can come get B-roll of. Right here we have a Lightstorm Mini 20D for our back hair light. Bring that down on the C-stand, prop it back up, and that's our hair light. Back here we have two tube lights that kind of light up the back wall. Little plant here for a little 
you know, fill in our frame a little, make it look nice. And then I plop myself right there, bring in the mic and we begin filming. So that's uh, the basics of how this is set up. On all the walls here, you'll see acoustic panels on the walls, just helps with the acoustics. We've got acoustic panels up here once again, and then these nice foam guys here that we can move around. Again, when I'm filming in here, I usually bring one or two of those right up against there just to help isolate that sound a little better. Moving over here to this desk, this is my iMac Pro, the $14,000 one that I used up until I got the Mac Pro, which you'll see over there in my office. But this is just an editing station for the team. Uh, Stockton comes and edits here, Landon comes and edits here. This is an uplift desk once again. This is just a regular LG second monitor here. Back here we got a C100 Mark II, that's Dakota's. I had a C200, didn't love it, didn't use it much. I use my 1DX Mark II a lot more for the type of stuff I shoot, so I sold that. But Dakota has his, mostly for streaming. Um, long format content. This could be more than 30 minutes because it doesn't have a 30 minute record limit. Up here again, another Sure SM7B. Back here, Landon will show us that we have our GTEC drives. Love GTEC, super high quality, reliable, fast. This is a 96 terabyte, it's a 16 terabyte. Um, this is basically a backup of all my footage. Show you over here that we have a bigger drive that I recently got. Also, I failed to mention that a lot of times I'll do my Facebook Lives here, pop up with my computer, hook it up to my camera via a cam link, is what it's called, that allows you to go from camera to computer and then I'll stream live Facebook question, Q and A, stuff like that. Moving on now to the break room. Check out our break room here for food and drinks and whatnot. And then our bathroom's over there. But here we have Tanner and Dakota's office space. This is nicely acoustically treated. If you haven't seen it, check out our video that shows you in depth um, how we acoustically treated this room, the steps we went through. This is Tanner Townsend's desk. He's using another one of my iMacs. This was the second iMac I got. iMac Pro is the third one I got. He has some Yamaha speakers here, uh, really great speakers to sound design and all that. Tanner also um, has his own headphones. Stockton's wearing the uh, Sennheiser headphones that I'd recommend for sound designing when you're using headphones. When you're not using headphones, I'd recommend recommend using these. People ask, should you use headphones or should you use speakers? They're both good references and I'd say use both. Um, I think you'll get a more accurate sound if you're using these, assuming that your room is tr uh, treated acoustically. But yeah, and then over here we got Dakota set up. He has a 450 inch Samsung. Yeah, it's like uh, 50, it's, it's a giant curvy screen. Um, I don't know why you need a screen that big, but Dakota needs it. And so there it is. He also has an iMac Pro G Tech Drive Tower. He actually built this desk himself, so don't ask me where he got it, because he'll have to come build it for you. All right, moving on now to my office. This is where my domain is located. So in here we have some acoustic phone up here, some nice uh, bass traps in the corner. And to make it a little more artsy, I separated them by an inch. And then here we have the Geek Acoustic panels again. I probably spent about two grand just in Geek Acoustic panels. Again, more expensive, but they're gonna give you a little bit better acoustics. They are better looking in my opinion, so I really enjoyed those. And uh, here we have the Mac Pro. Honestly, guys, comparing to the iMac Pro, just not much of a difference. Go check out that comparison. I think it was like 20, 5% faster in some categories and same in other categories. So do I recommend getting it? If you already have an iMac Pro, no. I think the iMac Pro is just fine. In fact, I'd probably recommend getting the iMac Pro instead. Again, here we have my nice lumbar supported chair. Um, this guy is our 6K Apple display. I haven't talked about this yet. Still getting a feel for what I think about it, but so far I'm not super impressed. For six grand, it's kind of like, eh. My LG screen, or I used to, you guys know that I, I had before this a LG 65 inch OLED display. And I honestly think I liked that better. For the price, I mean, it's gonna be a third of the price for an LG OLED TV. The color accuracy is awesome and that's great for color correcting and whatnot. So yeah, some people may have reasons why they would consider it worth it. Coming to my monitors here, my speakers. These guys I just upgraded from the Rocket KRK Eights, I believe is what I had before. One of them went out after about two years of use. You know, they're cheaper and that's gonna happen, not gonna last as long. So I was asking Brendan, by the way, what he recommended, and he recommended I get these guys, I'll link them. They're about $3,500, so they're almost 10 times more expensive than my previous ones. You may ask, is it worth it for 10 times more money? Honestly, the sound coming out of these things, the way I could describe it, it's like if you're colorblind and you see color for the first time, 
when I listened to this, it was like hearing color for the first time. Now obviously I can't accurately convey that audio to you, but it's so crisp. Usually bass is kind of like this is like so crisp. You get it. Anyway, point is awesome speakers. Love those. Highly recommend them. Here we got the Aperture 120D version 2. Again, highly recommend version 2's over version 1's of Aperture's lights. Let me just bring my blinds down over here <laughs> and we'll turn on all of our lights. I usually work with um, in darkness because I'm just a dark kind of guy. No, I, I like working in darkness because um, it's easier on my eyes. I have sensitive eyes. So I black out the room like this usually. And I haven't used this setup for a video yet, but I just barely got everything situated. Over here, you got the LS Mini 20C. And then you see on here, I have a nice little gel, that light blue back there. Back here, we got another Mini 20 that gives me the hair lights. And then back here, you can see I have a Philips Hue strip that allows me to, from my phone, control the light color. So if you watch here, I can change the color of my phone and it changes the color in my off five. So yeah, super enjoy those Philips Hue strips. What else we got in here? Oh, uplift desk, this whole thing raises up. Don't need to show you that, you know how those work. G drive down here, 112 terabyte G drive and these uplift desks allow you to hook a little cage on here so this rises with it so it doesn't yank any cords out as you're lifting this up and down. If we're going to talk about what's in my bag, we better show you my actual bag. Um, nothing's changed here from the past years. I use an ape case. It has wheels on the bottom so that when I'm on the road, oh yeah, don't have to carry that in my back. Camera gear gets heavy. I recommend that guy. We'll link to that. And then last but not least, here we have Actually, I didn't talk about my other tripod. That tripod in the next room over is uh, my favorite tripod. It just allows you to lift up the legs all at once. Super fluid head and super light, uh, but it is super expensive, probably two grand. This one's a Manfrotto. Don't like it as much. The legs are a little bit jankier, it's a little bit heavier, but it's about a third the price. Still an awesome tripod. On here, we have the Pad Prompter Pro, which I use to read scripts when I'm doing tutorials. On here, we have a 24 millimeter Sigma because this is the 1DX Mark III, which is full frame. So in order to get a similar look of the 20 millimeter on a 1DX Mark II that has a 1.35 crop in 4K, the 24 millimeter gets us closer to that same look that we've been having with the 20 millimeter on the 1DX Mark II. So that is the 1DX Mark III. Haven't used it a ton yet, but what I have used it for, definitely a great upgrade from the Mark II. And then up here we have the small HD 7 inch. Did a full video on that. I think that's pretty much it for our setup. That's uh, the office tour. So there you have it guys, that is the Office Tour 2020. Again, every year we've made a lot of progress in the types of gear we have, the types of gear we own. And uh, so it's been a work in progress. It's been a lot of hard work. Uh, we now have uh, seven or eight employees. And so, you know, full-time filmmaker and Park Wallach Productions, they continue to grow and we continue to bring on talented guys and continue to get new gear. A lot of work, guys. It takes work, but it's worth it. It pays off. I'm link in the description to all the gear you saw here today. And if you guys have any further questions for me, please let me know.